Death Spell Omega with their brand new album, The Synergy of Molten Bones. Now, if you're like me, who spent most of the past 24 hours asleep because death viruses are fun and cool, a, a really good wake-up call is actually this album. It's only four tracks. It doesn't even crack the 30-minute barrier. This is avant-garde, black metal, dark metal, occult metal, just... It fucks your ears up, Metal. That's basically what this is. Death Spell Omega has definitely made a reputation for themselves over the past ten years, considering they had a trilogy of albums that was all about God, Satan, and the Man. Uh, basically, all coming together, a very explorative uh, trio of albums that certainly made these guys a little bit more well-known within the heavy metal market. With that now being uh, sort of in the rear view, this full length, which it feels weird calling it a full length, it takes things in a bit of a different direction, but does not exactly, you know, stop whenever it comes to the absolute assault that this music really delivers. You hear that term avant-garde and you immediately think, well, this is going to involve a lot of weird starts and stops. It's going to really take the music in very different directions. Basically, with Death Spell Omega, it essentially just says, oh, we don't give a fuck. We don't give a fuck. Our compositions are going to be dirty, they're going to be exceptionally raw, at times it's going to feel like just an overwhelming aural assault, and it's going to really be more than you might be able to handle. If you are newer to this style of music, this might seem like an absolute mess. No beauty is conjured through these four tracks. And really, the very first cut, which is the title track, will prove that to you at nearly seven minutes in length. This is a song that may feel like it's ever longing whenever it comes to a brand new listener to this style of music as it just pulverizes through just blast beats and just aural, you know, decimation. The vocals are just really raspy and gives you a, you know, real haunt the whole way through and delivers uh, you know, this, this sermon, really, that is alongside or really, you know, barely over top this just absolute destruction that you're hearing on a musical front. And you might think to yourself, well, okay, for a first cut, that is, you know, certainly one direction that this band's going to take. All four songs. All four songs on this disc. That's tempo. That whole, you know, way in which they are delivering the sound does not stop all the way through it. It's almost like these four tracks, this album, uh, The Synergy of Molten Bone, is meant to exist as some of their old EPs uh, that have really come in between albums that have been 17 to 19 minutes in length that have really just existed as one cut. This is almost one that feels like it is the same song in four different chapters, and it's one that definitely bears that token very well, considering it does not feel like that there is a single moment that you have to breathe. Going into Famished for Breath, you're starting to feel that way, as you continue to have these sounds just absolutely pound your mind and encircle your entire person. And the one thing that is very interesting about this album is the fact that in spite of all this happening around you, in spite of all of this, which some may consider negative stimulus, you're enamored by this album. You're enamored by all of this chaos. It almost comes to represent everything that you believe heavy metal or at least extreme metal to be about, principally because it is. This is definitely a band that showcases why extreme metal is oftentimes debated uh, whenever it comes to the fans and why it is hotly contested that the more off of the grid that your sound really is the more that you fulfill the true nature of extreme metal and what's interesting is that you also have this 10 minute track that's track number three onward where most with raven i may meet which what a sentence but these guys are English is not the first language here, as you might imagine, but it's also very poetic. Ten minutes of the same oral chaos, this assault, there's very little in the way of let up, as we've been stating throughout this entire review, but it's mainly because it's absolutely true. You start to hear a couple of just sort of disembodied screams throughout this track also, some you know elements that sort of rise above the composition to really, once again, give it even more of that sort of disconnected effect where it seems as though... What you are listening to is the absolute destruction of not only man, but perhaps of God. And that duo, again, is very enamoring. It's something that sort of seduces you to keep on listening. And it's an album that certainly falls, you know, right into your lap in a strong way. And you figure, why not go for the whole entire journey? Fourth track, it's more of the same. 
you were expecting all that much of a difference on this album from what you got from minute one to you know minute 29 you're not going to get and we've mentioned that already well i'm going to mention it again just in case you didn't get it through your head this is not an easy album to listen to if you're brand new to the extreme metal market hell for somebody who's a seasoned veteran this will seem like it's right at home but whenever it comes to some of death spells other classics this album feels like it's Kind of just in between, uh, in between days, as some might say. This is a album that has a lot of strengths. I would have almost liked to see it be a little bit longer, and also see some of the other trademarks of Death Spell's discography, where they're able to sort of tape things to a different degree. Again, this effect where it feels like it is one track that has sort of been separated into four in order to deliver a 30-minute-long track. Uh, it worked well for Winter's Gate uh, by Insomnium, did not really work as well here if that was the intent. But either way, still an 81 out of 100. It is a seductive listen. This is an album that is hard to put down, even if you don't completely understand it, even if it doesn't completely make sense. That's, you know, destructive tone, that's overall just pulverizing rhythm, everything coming together and sounding like it is just disconnected from all of musical reality is what makes this a very, very cool listen. It gives it that extra charm that maybe keeps you listening. But again, like I said, definitely not for everybody. What did you think about uh, the synergy of Molten Moan by Deathspell Omega? Let my sick ass know in the comments below. My name is Cover Killer Nation. I'm gonna go back to sleep. Man, it's been a rough 24 hours, 48 hours. Thanks to everybody who has stuck by. Uh, scope out this disc, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Take care. Hey guys, thanks for viewing this video. If you want to see and hear my thoughts on other 2016 albums, definitely check out the link to your left. The link to your right will take you to the Five Reasons playlist, which will tell you why people hate bands. It's really silly. It's really stupid. It's a fun watch, so check it out. I'm Cover Killer Nation. I'll talk to you next time. Take care.